popping. It's your boy, Mike Powers. Uh, sad day today across the basketball universe and also across the world. Kobe Bean Bryant is reportedly dead at the age of 41. Reports say that Kobe was in a helicopter, which he was known to frequently use around California in order to avoid traffic, something he'd been doing for years. Helicopter went down five people, including the legendary Kobe Bryant were pronounced dead at the scene. Usually I would do subscriber shout outs. I know there's quite a few new ones. I will get to that next video. I'm sure you understand. I was preparing to record another show and went to uh, Google looking for pictures and I was stunned to see the headline that Kobe Bryant was suddenly not with us. I just believe saw a story last night that talked about LeBron James passing Kobe on the all time scoring list. I saw a picture of LeBron greeting Kobe and Kobe giving well wishes. This was last night, I believe in Los Angeles. And I believe by 1030 this morning, Kobe Bryant was indeed dead. I wanted to make this video real quick out of respect for Kobe Bryant due to the fact that I have watched Kobe grow up in front of the camera. My first experience with Kobe Bryant in terms of knowing who he was, was his high school announcement in his gymnasium, I believe at Lower Marion High School in Philly. Skinny kid with sunglasses on declaring his eligibility for the NBA draft for going college in the process. And my first thought was, who is this cocky kid with the sunglasses on? And I, he thinks he already made it. He knew something that I did not know at that time that the league did not know because he refused to, I don't know what team they were going to draft him to. I believe maybe it was Charlotte. And he said that he wasn't going to do that. If you made him go there, it could have been Philly. I'm not sure. If you made him go to that team instead of going to the Lakers where he wanted to go, that he would simply go to college. The league did not want to take that gamble. They worked something out. At the time, he was much maligned in the media for being spoiled and not accepting the opportunity that was given to him and simply going to the team that was going to draft him. Uh, years later, Eli Manning would do the same thing. And nobody had a word to say about it, but Kobe, one of the first to call his own shots in this game. He took Brandy to prom, which kind of raised his profile uh, way back in the day. This is early 90s. And Brandy was already famous, famous. And Kobe took her uh, to prom. And so he just kind of blew up in terms of his visibility from that standpoint. He got to the Lakers, um, made an instant impact. But in the playoffs, he notoriously shot quite a few air balls and they didn't reach the heights that they wanted to reach their first year. Of course, nobody ever does, or they rarely ever do. Kobe Bryant on the stat sheet, fourth leading scorer in NBA history, five-time NBA champion, two-time finals MVP, 18-time All-Star, and won an NBA record for All-Star games, four All-Star games, from uh, all accounts, Kobe was a fantastic father, a doting father. He had some uh, prop, some personal problems quite a few years back and worked very hard to correct them, showing young men that you can fall and get back up and rebuild yourself. 
and you very rarely had you very rarely heard a bad word said about Kobe Bryant. I wanted to go live today, just didn't know how I was going to react to it. And kind of people, when they see this video, can say kind of what they want to say about my rea my reaction to what's happening, what's happened today. But Kobe Bryant was a legendary and phenomenal force in the NBA. He did, in fact, change the game. Or Michael Jordan changed the game. LeBron James changed the game. In between Michael Jordan and LeBron James, there was Kobe Bryant, who made the game even more global. The, his father was an NBA basketball player, Jelly Bean Bryant, and he played also overseas, I believe uh, raised Kobe in Italy. So Kobe did know how to speak fluent Italian, very intelligent, articulate, thoughtful young man that he grew into and supported quite a few charities. Uh, he had a, a charity fund for children in China where 5 million yen was uh, donated, a basketball academy, numerous other charities, which he was very low key about. But before I get out of here, I want to illustrate the kind of person Kobe Bryant was through a story that I read on the internet. Stay with me. We're almost done. They talk about the lesser known Kobe and they talk about a couple from Lake Havasu, Arizona, who had three children in 2009, their son, Joey, then 21 was diagnosed with high grade form of bone cancer. In February, 2010, his left leg had to be amputated when the cancer spread. A month later, the cancer had entered Joey's lungs. In May, with fluid filling his lungs, Joey was airlifted to Los Angeles Area Hospital. Through it all, Joey continued to follow his beloved Lakers and Kobe Bryant, his favorite player. It was Joey's refuge from reality. How cool it would be if I actually got to meet Kobe, Joey told his family. They knew that would be the ultimate boost for his sometimes sagging spirits. While keeping a low profile, Bryant had been heavily involved in charity work over the years, but he usually cut back during the playoffs, determined to keep his sharp focus. And when the request to see Joey was made, Bryant's Lakers were beginning the Western Conference Finals against the Phoenix Suns, Joey's hometown team. Still, Bryant agreed to talk to Joey. On May 17th, 2010, two days before the planning meeting, Joey's temperature shot up to 106 degrees. Can I still go? He asked his oncologist, William Tapp, according to the family. If I said no, would you listen? The doctor replied. He didn't need to hear Joey's answer. He already knew what it would be. All right, Tapp said the doctor. But if you go, you have to get Kobe to sign something for me as well. Despite his pain and high fever, Joey managed to smile. When he woke up on the morning of May 19th, his temperature had dropped. His determination to keep his date with his hero had been rewarded. Joey's biggest worry, Linda said, was that if he didn't get better, he would make Kobe sick right in the middle of the playoffs. After the Lakers defeated the Suns that night to go up two to zero in the series, after Bryant had dressed and met with the media, he walked into a private room at Staples Center where Joey, his mother, and his sister waited. Hey, Joey, where were your seats? Brian asked, going on to describe his own experience watching a game as a teenager. They chatted. Brian signed every item Joey had brought with him and then took pictures with the family. When Brian finally left, Joey's face was glowing. He talked to me like he had known me for years, Joey said. We chatted like we were old buddies. What a class act, Linda said of Bryant. He took the time in the middle of all he had going on to light up a young man's life. On June 11th, just over three weeks after he met Bryant, Joey died. He was buried in a Kobe Bryant jersey 
Six days later, the Lakers beat the Boston Celtics in Game 7 of the NBA Finals for Bryant's fifth and, as it turned out, last championship. But for that brief time, Bryant was all Joey talked about. It's the kind of man he was. It's the kind of man we'd lost far too soon. A global ambassador for the sport. A shining example of redemption. Overcoming all odds. And so before I leave, I'd like to repeat a couple of things that I wrote that I think pertains to Kobe. And I'll leave it at that. True greatness is born from conquering heights previously unimagined. And if greatness is measured by impact, then Kobe Bryant was the very definition of it. Rest in peace, rest in power, Kobe Bean Bryant.